What's up everybody? I know it's been a very long time since I've done a vlog, but I just got in the house and I had the most amazing epiphany today and I just wanted to share it with y'all. And I pretty much wanted to dedicate it to those specific people who feel like they have experienced some type of hurt from the church. Um, statistics tell us and studies show that the first five years of a child's life are very important. They're the most important years because it sets the child up for how they're going to live, what behaviors they're going to display, what issues they're going to have, what problems they're going to go through. And I personally believe that your first few years in the church, um, it's in a church setting, are very much the same way because you're coming in, you're coming in, you're new to Christ, you're a baby, first five years. And my experience in my first few years with some of the the people that I chose to fellowship with, um, I pretty much ended up feeling like what I got from those people was what not to do. Um, and it set me up for bitterness and resentment towards those people because what I was witnessing is that they were able to still stay in their sin habits and get away with it quote unquote and I do that quote unquote because they're not getting away with it God sees all he knows all so they're not really getting away with it but I couldn't see their breakdown like I couldn't see their chastisement which is none of my business anyway but I'm just giving y'all the epiphany I had today so what I'm realizing is every time I try to do something intentional that I know I have no business doing or I try to make a habit um, of some type of sin lifestyle, I can't do it. I get chastised. I don't have any peace. Um, I'm miserable until I sit down with God, let him deal with me, and I repent of that thing and make a conscious effort to not continue to do it. And that's just not what I was seeing with with some people. Not all of them, but with some of them. And what that what that did for me was it made me look at myself like, why am I different? Why can I not do these things? And it's created animosity towards some of those people, which I'm just figuring out today. But it's also created animosity toward God because I guess it makes me feel like he's separating me out. Why can't I do what everybody else is doing in the church? Not everybody. I'm just talking about a specific group of people, y'all. So... What the Holy Spirit gave to me tonight was so valuable and I feel like just compelled to give it to y'all because, you know, you guys that follow me on Twitter and on Facebook, I truly do love y'all and I appreciate all of your support and just the fact that you allow me to even bless you. It blesses me to be able to bless you with stuff like this. So I just want to say to you, if you feel like you've been hurt from from the church and that's caused you to turn your back on God. It's not God. All of us are in a broken state. There may be areas that you're broken in that I've overcome. We might not be broken in the same areas, but each and every one of us is broken in some area of our lives that need, and this is why we need a savior. So, don't turn your back on God because of people. People are going to be people. And anything that has people, multiple people involved in it, there's going to be some type of dysfunction with it. I mean, I'm just keeping it real. So don't turn your back on God because this person or that person can't get it together. And let me clarify something before I even go on. The Holy Spirit really set me straight on. I need to be thanking God that I can't continue in a sin lifestyle like some of the stuff that I've seen. I need to be thanking God for my chastisement. I need to be thanking God that he is taking, that my peace is gone. Not that he's taken away, but that I've lost it because I'm trying to do something I have no business doing. God is a parent. He's our father. So just like if you disobey your parents, if they tell you to do something, you do the opposite or you don't do what they told you to do, what happens? you get chastised. That's a wonderful thing because it keeps a lot of us out of jail and out of really bad situations. So 
what I'm saying to y'all is, is that thank God that you can't live that lifestyle, but don't condemn people who do. Pray for them. Only God can can deal with that, and he's going to deal with that. They're not getting away with it. It might look like they're getting away with it now, but ultimately, they're not getting away with anything. Be the example that you want to see. And after you watch this YouTube video, you should really go and check out the one I did called Be the Example because I'm getting ready to do that and I bet it's going to bless me all over again because people are going to be people. It's not God. God is love. God never changes. God is perfect, but we are not. And that's where we get it messed up is when we take our eyes off God and start looking at people. We got to stick to Philippians 4 and 8, y'all. We got to think on those things that are true, those things that are praiseworthy, those things that are lovely. Because if you start looking at what's going on out here, you're going to lose it. Stay focused. Stay positive. Stay real. Love y'all. And God loves you best. I'm getting ready to take it to the bed. Thank you for even clicking on this and listening. And I pray that it bless somebody. Have a good night.